Welcome to the Bronx Ever Saw Arts documentary. My name is Butch Chu. Uh, on my right, uh, we have uh, Pastor Crespo. I believe in the house we also have Steve, Steve Payne. He's the big dog. And we got a couple of friends sitting in watching. Uh, and I'd like you to introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Olga Correa. I'm a native of the Bronx. And um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. And, and when you say uh, native of the Bronx, you were born here in the Bronx? I was born in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. But I came here when I was less than two years old. How did so, that happen? You just... Um, looking for work, my, you know, it, this was, the Bronx, a lot of Puerto Rican migrated to the Bronx. And it was uh, factories, and my grandmother and my mother were seamstress. So it was a big industry in the Bronx when it came to factories with um, women that were seamstress. So that's how we came here. What year was that? Was like the 50s or? The 60s. Early 60s. Five. Okay. Three. Somewhere around there. That's a good. Uh, so you were two years old. Uh, yeah. Where did y'all land at when you first got to? The Lancy Street. Oh, yeah. Lower East Lower, Side. Uh oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. my dad was a mechanic and he had a, a shop out there. Um, but shortly after that, we, we moved to the Bronx, and that's where we reside, and my dad stayed in the Lower East Side. But what do you remember about the Lower East Side? Did you like it? Was it, were you upset was, about leaving? I was too small, but I have a really crazy memory. So I drew a, a photo of me being bathed in, a, in the sink, you know, the old school, yeah. <laughs> and looking out and seeing the rooftop and pigeons. But the light was off, so everything was silhouette in the in the kitchen. And my mom said, "How do you remember that? You were like one." And I said, "I don't know. It kind of seems like a dream, but I know it was reality because I could feel being like wet and her touching me. So I knew this must have been the apartment prior to us moving to the barn." All right. So you, you, I guess you have minimal remember uh, memories oh, about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, so you and Mars moved uptown to the Bronx. To the Bronx. Where, where at? Tiffany Street. I know, that Tiffany and Barreto. And all yeah, that. so that, that, that documentary, um, 80 Blocks and Tiffany, a lot of my family members are in there. Oh, yeah? So the yeah. rooftop scene, that's actually where I live now. Simpson. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, tell me about your uh, other family. You have other family members? Or yeah. Um, brothers, sisters? I have um, some... My mother's been married twice, so there's five of us. Um, I'm the oldest, the eldest. Um, maybe that we all grown. Okay. Um, we all moved out our separate ways, but my mom still resides on Simpson Street. Oh yeah, she lives near you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. We're in the same building, actually. Wow. Because I had moved to Chelsea Street. Um. Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, 1186 Broadway on 27th Street. When I graduated college, nice town. Yeah, I was a fashion designer. We'll get to that. Uh huh. That's why I was trying to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I moved back to the Bronx. I missed it. Yeah. So much cheaper too. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it, it, it averages out because it takes you a little longer to get to the Bronx. That's funny. Yeah. I like my neighborhood. So um, then can we talk about? So you moved up to uh, Tiffany Street. What about your junior high school, public school? Across the street, it's still there. What school is that? I, I started at PS60. Um, that's between Prospect and Rogers Place. I know the area. And then I went to IS116, which is right on Tiffany, so I was literally across the street. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we moved to Simpson, uh, my mother made sure that I applied to schools in Manhattan. She wanted me to. Uh, be a little more cultured and have that's an early influence for you. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Made it a point. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah. And you wound up uh, in what high school? Uh, high school of art and design. Right. That's that's good. You had to have a portfolio or anything like that. A portfolio. I just spoke about this at Crash's uh, uh, Q and A. Um, I didn't know what art and design was. You know, 
you know, remember we had the fat book and we had to pick the high schools. My mother made sure all of them were in Manhattan. Um, my, one of my uh, teachers said, because um, I was really shy and I would draw, and he was like, you know, you should apply for art and design, but you need a portfolio. I didn't know. And we were really, really poor, and he actually purchased everything for me. And then he spoke to my mother, and he was like, if you don't mind, I'll take her on Saturday. He took me to Central Park so I can do scenery. And, you know, and he put it together, and he explained to me the process and for what for me to expect when I get there and take the exam. Um, so, you know, if, if it wasn't for him, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. And he, it was out of his pocket. So I did that, and I remember getting there, and they would put the portfolio behind us on a table, and we were doing still life. We were drawing. Bold fruit. Bold fruit, the vase. But I kept looking back because I was so nervous. Where my stuff? <laughs> no, because, you know, even though I saw kids that had leather portfolios, I had a paper one. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not even going to get in. Like, I saw people with nice clothes. The first time that I'm really seeing, like, rich folks. I'm like, oh, man, I, 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 I don't have a shot, you know. And back then, it was, they would choose one student out of ten. Really hard to get into. So when I got that acceptance letter, <laughs> open all the doors. Yeah. I was really happy. And it was the era where Carlos, Mayor, Lady Pink, I was in that that era. Yeah, that was uh, the early 80s? Early 80s. Yeah, because I was close to y'all. But um, so did you have any partners in school or you just was solo? I was a loner. Oh, well, I won't say that. Um, um, Danny, Eco, he's from Queens. He used to write? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Eco. Eco. He, um... We still, we're still friends. He was like, I never ever knew that you wrote, Olga. Like, he's like, but I, I was very quiet. I was to myself. And Bill Blass also. Bill Blass was in my illustration class. So him and I would sit next to each other and I would, um, he would always have a black book and he would let me play, you know, and, and play with the letters. That's how I got awesome with it. You know, and he was like, take the book home practice. And I was like, no, I don't want to lose it. I was really nervous about it. I said, no, we'll be in class. We can, we can, you know, and I saw him at the Bronx Museum when they had the big opening for uh, the graph. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I was I was there. That was right. like the biggest party the in the biggest party in years. Right. I finally saw him. It's been over 30 plus years, almost 40 years. And I told him that story, and he said, I would have never known. <laughs> he gave me a hug. I'm like, you see how the smallest thing, you know, will, will can change someone's life. Yeah. But he was also a really good person. I think I saw him at the, um, what show did they just have? Something, but he, I think he does airbrush a lot, mm -hmm. stuff like that. He's nice. He's nice. Um, so you had uh, some early influence without even really realizing, sometimes you realize it later. And you'd be like, wow, you know, but uh, but what was your social life? You said you was basically a loner. Um, did, did, you, uh, did you hang out in the lunchroom? Did you, did you... Well, lunchroom was like, it was awesome because we had um, the graphers, rappers, and then you had the rockers. So it was literally divided. That was the point when they, they used to film. That was a big show. It was just a film back. Yeah, they, they actually did. came to our school. Martha Cooper has that famous photo. What was it there. called again? Uh, it's true. There's a few shows that came from that. The high true. school lunch rooms and yeah. the dancing. And, yeah. But what they didn't specify is they would assign your lunch room because of your last name. So I sat with the rockers because I was with Crespo's and, you know, and they were all the Italians, and so I was on the other side. But I love the music too. What music was that? Zeppelin. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They, It was really heavy, heavy yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. Um, 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 Pat Benetton. I loved her. So I learned the music because everyone brought a boombox. Boom Even oh, yeah. the rockers yes, did too. Yes. Like that's not forget the rockers yes. brought the boombox. 
So I learned about the rockers and, and everything because I had to sit on this side, but my people was over here. So after you have your lunch, then you socialize. Right, right. Everybody around. move around, yeah. Everybody move around. Did you ever take to try your hand at the uh, B girl stuff? Or? No, no, no dancing, I was never into no, no hustle, no, 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 no. I did a little bit of DJ because my cousin was, but I was so extremely shy. I did not want the attention towards me. I think that's why graph was just so easy for me. You can see the name, you don't see me. Yeah. But that that was that was a good time. That was a good time. Uh, it was the beginning of of everything. Yeah, uh, so who was your favorite group? Did you get any hip hop in there? Was hip, hip hop was already popping then, yeah. But I mean, uh, rock and roll got some nice songs, of course. Nice songs. Nevada, all of them. I love yeah, uh, all of them. Brand new radicals, Pat Benatar was just an island yeah. at that point. But, um, I live next to Casita Maria, which is part of the documentary of Tiffany. Um, we bought some Tiffany, and the first jam that I went to was Grandmaster Flash, and it was Theodore. They used to jam at Casita Maria. Oh, yeah. So that was my introduction. Where's that at? On 163rd Street, on the east, on the east side of, of the Bronx. I know. So I know. Yeah. while they plugging in the, the block party, and then we brought it inside to the community center. I was I was there. That's how I, that was my first job was that community center. So to see every that evolution, no one knew in a thousand years that this was you know blow up. Blow up. This is our music. Our we relate to this. You know they don't radio doesn't even exist for us when it comes to this type of music. But I would that was that was the challenge was to see how you scratch. How the DJ, first of all, being smart, was not looked upon, uh, uh, looked frowned upon. The more you knew, like my my fellow friends would read the dictionary because they wanted to use those words. They wanted to be smart. So, and you didn't know, never wrote anything down. So every, everything was freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the bigger the words were. The better you were. You <laughs> so you know, um, I kind of miss that 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 part because everything is dummied down and it's really sad today. You know, yeah. it's different. It, it's different. Yeah, but, it's um, different. Moving on. When did you uh you you fell in? It sounds like you fell in love with art, right? In the early age, where everybody used to doodle on paper and right. superheroes and stuff. When did you start liking graph? When did you want to get up and go out and, and write your name? And also, you did you ever have an alter ego? You never wanted to be like a cat woman, or you, you just went with older. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I knew what I had inside me. She just wasn't ready to come out. But when it came to my character, and I, and that when did you develop the character? Oh God, since I was little, I have my 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 um my jacket which I showcase. It, I did my jacket in 1980, and my character is on it because I have to prove to people she's always been there. Mm. She's just morphed into who she is now with me. Evolution and all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, back in the burning, back when I was younger, we would tag. For political reasons. It wasn't an ego, let me get my name up. It's like that's the, the, the famous um La Promesa. Y'all you, you promised that you were going to help us. So it was a political thing back in the 70s when you grasped. Now I would put my name because I kind of wanted to be her. Those were abandoned buildings. Nobody cared. We can, we can go and grasp it all day. You really think a cop was going to stop you? They didn't, they didn't even want to be... We tearing our own stuff up. They didn't care. They Go didn't ahead, care. knock yourself out. Right. <laughs> they wanted to do that. Yeah. So that became just, I wanted to be heard. And my mom would say, was that that's you, your name over there? Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, you're so invisible. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. She didn't find about it neither. She was like, knock yourself out. As long as you don't get in trouble. So yeah. you were there for the burnt down Bronx. Yeah, Absolutely. 
Yeah, I was too. But then it was it wasn't a bad thing. This is what we had. That's what we had. We played in in the banking lots and yeah, you know, yeah. I got I got scars in my knees to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that was our background. The the dirty mattress that was our trampoline. Yeah. The fire escape. We used to sleep there, and all our friends would come up and put pillows, put the little TVs in the window sill, yeah. and we the whole summer we chilled. You could sit outside all day. Yeah. And let the, the, the mist from the fire hydrant. That was our little area. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. And back then, they used to bring a truck, which was like a pool, but it was a a what do you call those um, containers with the top cut? open and they would fill it with water and that was our pool back in the day mm -hmm. you know they would come you know maybe once a month and we can especially in august just to cool the kids down. yeah yeah you know and and that was just an urban thing yeah or oh, the rooftop i i learned how to fly pigeons and oh yeah <laughs> for sure a lot of people don't know how 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 somebody in, 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 in your building got a pigeon coop yeah, we won't say who. And he's the no. only one that he's yeah. still he's still flying. Yeah, my cool. uncle actually, my uncle that taught me how to fly pigeon taught him as well. That go, they've been up the flying for a long time, probably fifty or more years. Absolutely. Yeah. What about uh, street games? You ever you ever played Skelsy? Oh, Skelsy, that was a beast on it. Uh, you right. take the bottom of the the wooden chair and then put and the wax the metal, in it and stuff. Get the wax. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. And it's great that they can fly. Smooth, yeah. yeah. Rain Alivio yeah. and all that. Johnny on the pony. Yeah. You can, you can jump down with that? Yeah. What uh, about the one where all the kids jump on you? Oh, Johnny on the pony. Johnny on the pony. Until it gets like this high yep. and then they just collapse. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, your parents would tell you go outside and play. There was no television. Tele mm -hmm. Television was in the living room. That was uh, a, a luxury. That's after dinner, we would all sit together and watch a show. No one had television in their bedrooms. Everybody go outside and play. Mm -hmm. So how did you move from uh, art and design to fashion? First of all, you made it through art and design. Yeah. That's great. I'm glad you thank Congrats. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> well, that one, a lot yeah. of people, you know. There's a lot of stuff was going on. Uh, yeah. You made it through there. That's a problem. I had to. That's, I had to. That's the only way I was able to, to elevate to where I was. To. My mother sacrificed. My family sacrificed. But did you ever sit down with her and discuss the mission, what we what we doing here, and what we got to do, what we need to do to get to where we're going? Did you, did you ever have that conversation? No. Back then, you just listen to your parents. This is what you're going to do. No reason. Just you, this is what you're gonna do. Just, you don't talk back. Yeah. No, no question. <laughs> you don't question that. <laughs> you take. You know, your parents are your guardians. So you take that, and I will say, so my, my aunt is Lorraine, so Lorraine, she's from the Savage Soul. Oh, yeah. Um, and she was really important in my life because I didn't I didn't understand. So back then in, in, in the gang, so the Savage Soul uh -huh. would protect the neighborhood. They did so many good things, just like the Black Panthers, but they're not, they're not seen in that light. No. You know, so, you know, I was just telling my, my Aunt Lorraine, I asked her about Bubba, because Bubba would come to my grandma's house and he would take me to school in kindergarten and put me on his shoulder. And I always wanted to be tall because he was so huge. He was like six foot. And I was like, wow, this is what it looks like to be tall. I always wanted to be tall. But, you know, it, it was a, a, a community and a village that raised me. Mm -hmm. I was protected by them. Which I didn't know until I got older. I thought everyone was everyone had a gang in their family that would take care of them. I didn't know, you know. So, so many things kind of molded me. So I never questioned it. I always felt safe, so there was no question. Enjoy the ride. Absolutely, <laughs> and make the best of it. Right. Because everyone sacrificed for me, so I have to succeed. There's no losing in this at all. At all. Any other uh, aunts and uncles, anybody was with the uh, skulls? Because if you were a certain yeah. age, you were just part of that. Exactly. Yeah. So they were family, so I didn't know no difference. I remember I went to school, I'm not sure it was first grade. And you know how they ask, so what does your mother do for a living? What is your 
So I told everyone in my school that my grandmother was a nurse. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I didn't realize that my grandmother was sewing and taking bullets out of all the Sabbath schools with the equipment that she had as a seamstress. And I would help her. So in my mind, she was a nurse. Yeah, right. <laughs> she was like, get me this gauze. She would make, and back then in the bodega, they used to sell sugar cane. We didn't eat candy. Yeah. We ate apples yeah. and, you know, real food. And that And that that So she would have them bite into the sugar. The, yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm there, you know, I'm not squirmish. So I'm like helping her. So I told everybody in school that my grandmother was a nurse. I had no clue. That was like a pop-up emergency room. That's right. <laughs> it's everything. That's good. So you get to a uh, fashion. Did you have to be tested to get in there? Or you just... Yeah, absolutely. What was the test to sit though? Um, portfolio as well in an interview. But that was actually easier because I was already more confident. Right. You know, and um. Because of my family being seamstress and everything, right. and I knew how to sew and um. So you was dealing with clothes and stuff. I was dealing with clothes, oh. you know. So I was very familiar in drawing different types of fabric. So that was a that was a cinch. When they saw my portfolio, they just closed it. I remember uh, the same thing. I remember looking back. He slipped through twice, and he looked at her like, "Yeah." Yeah. Any, but I already knew. I already felt it because mm -hmm. you know. Fashion was in our culture, so that was nothing. That was easy. Yeah, um, because I I think I read something. You you designed for a lot of people. Yes, I did. And you had a, a line. I think you have a line now. You, you're involved in that fashion thing still, as well as graffiti, especially now when they're putting graffiti on clothes. And it was insane because so I graduated in June. I got my first fashion design job in August. Where? Um, Elko Import. So we was an import. So we would get, like, I did a lot of men and boys, so Bugle Boy, uh, French Toast, all of those designs was mine. Um, we did a lot of department stores, Sears. Back then, Woolworths had clothing, so I would do all the baby lines and whatever. And then, so we had import from just different factories. And then one of my boys, Elliot Hosecker, his wife worked for J. Crew. So I got to do the women's line in J. Crew. Wow. You know, so I did a lot of Ocean Pacific. I was just telling someone I did all the silk screen. And I never been to California, but I had to, in my head, imagine what it would be in California. So the one that says, Life is a Beach, and you see the Jamaican guy with the surfboard, that's my design. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that's that. my design. So, yeah, but, you know, when you're bonded, you can't make money outside that's there Every, everything i did stayed with them so when i how left, did that bond thing come up it's just part it's of the contract oh you're working for them okay and anybody that comes in and contracts me it belongs to them so i worked for 15 years so when i left i couldn't use any Nothing. of that i had to start from scratch that's what happened but they were not interested in hip hop back then. Mm -hmm. They were total it all that to the side every time I tried. But at least at that point, you had the knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for that. I never see it as a, a, a negative. I learned a lot. I learned the business side of it, too. That's because the, the, the secretary, she was like, when I would come into the office, she would leave books in my desk about um, the LC. Mm -hmm. uh, the bank, how to how to how to maneuver the business size of it. She was like, because if you don't ask, they won't tell. And she's like, and you're so hungry for everything. She said that's gonna be. She learned that she's really cool. She liked me a lot. She was like, she's really cool. And then the, my boys got so comfortable. He would go. So Egypt would be for our cotton. Um, Turkey was for the leather. Uh, so they would go and leave me alone because I already knew everything. They were very comfortable with leaving me alone because I could handle it. And I was like in my 20s. It's the same when I think about it. But the streets prepared me for this. 
So when did you first get the graph bug? When did you want to get some spray paint? Funny enough, I think 2019. Recently, yeah. The nuts not recent, but it's recent. Yeah. Because and I, after the 15 years um, working as a fashion designer, I had my first child, and um, in art and fashion, in practically any part of art, there's no health benefit. And living in the Bronx is a high percentage of asthma. If you were born with asthma, and here goes all of my funding, <laughs> trying to pay for medical expenses. So a college friend of mine said, why don't you come work for the city? You know, she had, um, she had, she didn't want to do anything with, with, with art, so she went into the social service. And at that point, she was like, the benefits are phenomenal, and there's a pension. And I'm like, all right, let me do it for two years. Let me, let me pay off my bills or whatever. And um, that's where I landed at the Department of Homeless Services. You was a, you was a uh, social worker, kind of? No. no, I worked in the intake, so mm -hmm. I would process you. That's how I started. And the old EAU, if anybody knows that, that's when people slept on the floor. It was really bad. Where is that? 151st Street by Grand Concourse. Um, there was no, it was really HRA. You know, it was a pilot program on DHS because they wanted to not have people sleep on the office floors. It was really dangerous back then, you know, and uh, I, I was like, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. But um, a part of me also liked helping folks and working in the fashion industry and, and going to fashion shows. But back then it wasn't celebrities. It was only industry people because, you know, it was a part of what you're going to do for the next line. You know, it wasn't celebrities in the front and show up. Right. No, it was right. us. And we, most of us didn't even want to go. Um, and, and, and really, you know, bougie every year and, you know, I'm already living... So how, I got a little burnt out. So how do I give back? So it just fell in my lap and I fell in love with it. So January 6th, I just completed 25 years. With the, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You were able to get out? No, I'm still there. Okay. I'm on my way out, but. Yeah, but then you caught the grab book. Um, who, who introduced you to that? Or uh, how did you, or where did you go to do your first piece? Or? So um, I work for the Department of Homeless Services as a 24-hour agency. They open so right, right, three shifts, 24 hours, clean overtime, just working work nights. They merged with HRA, so they created a, a, a division called Department of Social Service (DSS). So that's people that know both sides without hiring new folks. They put you in the middle, the city for you. So that's where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Problem is, it's only nine to five. They don't give you overtime at all. So shock value. I'm like, what am I gonna do now? I'm so used to doing overtime. I'm That's so how you get all your money. What if, what if you're not finished the project and it's five o'clock and well, you leave it? Yeah, yeah. HRA mm -hmm. and I was not used to that. They were like, yeah, pick it up tomorrow. And I'm like, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. They were like, yeah, tomorrow. No, we don't do overtime. I'm like. Wow. So that's how I started going to um, shows again, introducing myself, and started seeing people that I know, and they were like, where the hell have you been? And I'm like, nothing. And I had not painted in so long, you know, and then I met this woman, Blanca, that's the one from Triple A, 3A Gallery, her apartment. I heard of that. Heard of that. She's wonderful. I would go to her show because my, one of my classmates from Art and Design NFIT, uh, Jason Keeling, he's an amazing, well-rounded, like, he has some of the iconic photos as well with um, rappers. Um, he passed away recently. Wow. Um, but he said to me, hit her up. She's a really lovely person. If you have a gallery, hit her up. And I'm like, okay. So when I met her, he was like, how do you know me? And I told him, by Jason, my friend, who went to high school and college. Mm -hmm. She left, and then she hit me up, and she was like, wait a minute, so that means you draw. I'm like, yeah. She was like, well, show me a portfolio. And I'm like, 
you have no reason. Like, what my portfolios are dusty. Like, they yeah. haven't mm-hmm. picked them up. But what I do is I have a um, green paper and I drawer during lunchtime. Because I might try better. Sometimes it's a little too expensive to keep buying lunch. So I sit there and I draw mm-hmm. just to loosen up my hand. Mm-hmm. So I put all of those together and put in the portfolio. Just simple pen to the paper. And I met her and she lost her mind. She was like, these are amazing. I'm like, really? And she was like, I'm going to give you your solo show. And I'm like, wait, I don't have anything. Mm-hmm. She was like, okay, um, can you have some pizza, some cabbages in me? I love a challenge. I'm like, okay, this is this is the shot. How can you not say yes? So that's why you noticed my canvases were eight by eight. Small joints. Right. Quick, easy. quick, easy. I could knock them out. Right. You Get know, ten real quick. Because I'm, I'm a night owl, so I have yeah. to bite. I use my elf makeup brushes because I didn't even have brushes. But I did have the paint. Brushes. Yeah. Wow. Remember, I didn't draw paint for like over 10 years. So I knocked those out. These were 30. And she wow. was. I saw the solo show. She was like in awe. And I, and I have to thank Crash because he had a Q&A at Warwork. Recently? No, that same, oh, that oh, same okay. night that I was opening. Right. Um, with... Um, uh, Sinon and someone on Aldea and Crash finished, closed wall works and brought everyone over. Nice. So when you see all those legends, thank you, Crash. That was him. And I sold out of all, all the pieces. Ooh. And Shiro, he came from Japan, brought someone from Switzerland, and they had luggage straight off the, the so thank you, Shiro. She came through. Like when I tell you people supported me, it was awesome. And I sold out. And that's the beginning of where I'm at now. And you had a lot of shows since then. You oh had you regularly, everywhere. Everywhere. I heard you mention something about London. Yeah. I What's currently going? have a show uh Leach Street Gallery in London. It's viral. Um but all the pieces are for sale until the end of April. And I'll give you an exclusive. Uh, they're paying me to do a mural in August in London, so I will be out there. Yeah. There will be 40 artists. I was just going to ask you, girl, which one? Oh, I don't know. I don't know the artist. But it's going to be 40. I'm artists. going by myself, so right. I don't know. Other people there. Other people. Wow. You, you got your uh, blueprint down? or you? No, I always go off the top of my I never skip anything when I do a wall because I kind of see what everyone is doing and key point I used to do advertisement I don't I incorporate everybody's colors so we can look seamless uniform I am not I'm not into my ego you know so let's 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 unify it you know and sometimes it's just it, whatever paint they offer me too I can't be choosy right so I can't have a, I don't want to get stuck, oh, this is what I need. And then I get there, they don't have and they give me paint that mm-hmm. don't match what is in my head. So, yeah, off the top of my head. It's better that way anyway. Uh, okay, uh, what do I have here? Yeah, well, you got uh, the little goodies you bought. Oh, yeah, yeah. so this is my diary. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all drawings, yeah. It's all drawings, so every night or... And that's that's consistent. That's what yeah. gets you That's what gets you all for that consistency. Yeah. Well, you got to understand, I work with social service, and sometimes I need to, a relief. If I'm not dining in a, you already know, in a fancy restaurant, having my dinner and my, 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 I, I sit home. And sometimes, like, I'll do current events, you know, um... So I express myself through that. So yeah, it's consistent. Like when when BMX died, you you always know why I did something. Is that a, a drawing? No, or this that? is this is a cutout. Okay, because I I like that. Uh, I call them uh, collages when you cut pieces yeah. and add. Collages. Them. I love, I love collages. That's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 when he passed away as well. Who is that guy? Oh, yeah. Because all of a sudden I start seeing that yeah, mask. Yeah, no, everywhere. he he's 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 a monster. 
So, like, you'll see, like, if I, whatever the current event and whatever I'm feeling, I'll put it on paper. That's good. That's great. You, you don't use pencil. You just go straight with ink. Depends. Sometimes I do. Okay. Sometimes I do. And I wanted to show you, so everyone's always fascinated by these little black books. So oh, yeah, sort of. It's like a keychain yeah. black book. So someone from Japan hit me up and said, can I send you a black book? And I said, sure. And he said, um, all right, it's a, it's, a, it's a mini black book. I'm thinking mini black book is this size. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we use the, right. the regular black right, book. Right, right. So he sends it to me. He said, don't take a while. It comes from Japan. And I'm like, okay, cool. When I saw this, I'm like, that's insane. And once again, I love the challenge. I'm like, how do I hold it? How do I? I put clips to put it up. Like, how? Do, so now, this is my technique. You got it now. <laughs> you got it. So, um, I started um painting every every page and tagging him and telling folks, hey, if you're interested in this black book, you know, hit this guy up, you know, and he just started with these small black books, and it just went. Crazy oh, yeah? viral. Wow. And he was like, Thank you so much, sis. Can I send you something else? And he sent me, it's called, uh, uh, and I didn't bring it, but it's a, a handheld one. It's a little, a little bigger, but it's about this big. It's like three by five. Right. So I did those, but I always promote him. So now he has merch. So he just sent me his merch. We're all mad. Black All right. Yeah. So now he got, I got hoodies. I got, so he always sends stuff to me. All right. He's from Japan. And um, where we uh, where are those being sold? Is it? in Japan. Yeah, he shipped it to you. We never met. We it was just him sending yeah. me stuff, and you know you have to support people. Yeah. And I always say I'm not blessed by accident. Work for it. You know I I bless others. Right. You know and don't and this is key. Just because you did something for this person, don't expect it from this person. Stop it waiting might for come that. From around it here comes somewhere. from behind. You're not supposed to be waiting for it. Right. So this young guy, amazing guy, just blew up, and yeah, and I'm very grateful because he always sends me stuff, and you know he tells me he got a website, he got a store. He just he did phenomenal. He's always thanking me, and I'm like, no, thank you, because you challenged me, and this is one of the key things when I have a show. I showcase this, and people are in, they go nuts. Wow. They go, how do you get so detailed? But you see, he helped me to elevate, to bring it back to small. Right. Because now, you know, I'm doing walls. How do you bring it back to this side? Yeah. So challenge me, and I'm in it. So that's nice to be able to go big or small. You got to be go. versatile. There you go. So what, what, what else you got going on? What's next? What's your next show? Um... Well, I'm doing workshops in libraries. I have two coming up. Where at? Um, Morrison and I can't remember the other one. I'll, I usually put it on my um, Instagram mm -hmm. when they give me the flyers. Right. So I love doing workshops for kids, you know, because I make sure that the kids understand that Big Brother's watching. Do not tag up. Like, I, I'm prideful that I graduated from college. I graduated from high school. Yeah. I wasn't a teenage mom. Right. I don't do drugs. Right. I never went to jail. All of the above still being in the South Bronx. Being a brown woman among peers that didn't look like me and still succeeded. You know? And if I pride myself on working, I tell people the hardest thing is to stay straight. Being a fuck up is simple. Easy. And then, oh, do I, can I curse? <laughs> And, yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, and um, and 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 white folks expect that from us. That's part of they think our DNA. Absolutely not. Look at I. I was raised with Sabbath school and everything, and there's nothing in Gang my about you. Nothing. Oh, don't get me wrong. Piss me up as you want to. Yeah, yeah. I know about. But I think that's a Puerto Rican in me. Yeah. But um, I've been among the elite and was able to to fit in because I deserve it and I work for it. 
not because they gave it to me or I'm trying to be something that I'm not. That's part of me. I work there. So it's very important, especially for women and young girls. So I do a lot of workshop with kids. So I promote that, okay, do your tag and everything, but I'm not telling you to go out there and tag. Right. I'm telling you to take that and make that your logo. How about that? Yeah. Make that your logo. Copyright that or, or do something and then start doing t-shirts. Right. Instead of going outside tagging. Use your tag as your logo. Yeah. I do it. So I turn the graph into something small business that the kids could do. Right. You know, because they're doing sneakers now. I think you've done. Sneakers. I think you've done some shoes. Y'all had uh, oh, yeah. was that the stocks and bonds thing with your shoes or? Right. Um. Well, it's Sinai. It was a fashion show, a hip hop right. fashion show. Right. And I did some stiletto with my face. I saw it. And the yeah. uh, heel had my brain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, representing myself once again. Mm -hmm. Um and um. Then I did in Brooklyn, I did out the box. So I did That's, the what That's what it was. That's what it was. The yeah. Tim, because yeah. I'm known for my Tim. Are you getting any orders for them, that type of stuff? Jackets and, and shoes take a lot of time, and I don't have it right now. I understand. Yeah. But jackets are expensive. They was, uh, they, and they was using the rhinestone gun to make yeah. the glitter. Jackets were selling for 5000 Stuff like that. Yeah, I, 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 that takes a lot of it does. time. It does. I don't have it right now, you know, because I like to put my all on it. You got your hands full, you're busy. Busy. You're and I got a nine to five. <laughs> People forget. You know, I do have a nine to five. I have a, a daughter in college. I'm paying for college. Yeah, well, how about the girls? How they doing? They're uh, doing well. They're doing well. Uh, did you had one graduate already? Or? She graduated this year from Albany State. Oh, yeah, I went quickly. Um, and my my oldest, she she also had a she has a federal job, so she's good. But both of my girls are artistic as well, and they both tattoo. Don't. Yeah, because I gave them my tattoo machine because I used to do that. You know, I, I put my hands in everything, airbrush, tattoo. Well, and they thought it was hilarious that I'm tattooing and I don't have not one tattoo. Just getting ready to say that. I don't have not one. That was another pride I didn't want tattoo. I didn't want any None. mockings in my body. None. I want to be clean slate. Because now everyone has tattoos everywhere. So my girls um, kind of took that and they love it. So they that's, that's their art part that they do. Nice, nice, nice. And so we got... Uh, okay, Um. so what do you consider yourself? Uh, you already said you were... Born in Puerto Rico at two, and you came to America at two years old. Moved to Tiffany Street, uh, junior high school, and um, public school. What do you identify as? Are you Puerto Rican or New York Rican? What do you? What do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. Okay. Both parents are Puerto Rican. All right. Um, if you see my parents, they're dark skinned. So. Nice. Yeah, so it's funny because I relate more with black. But back back in the sixties and seventies, Puerto Ricans and blacks didn't divide. So I don't understand this new culture where we are divided. Like I don't understand because Puerto Ricans are black. But you know, that's another that's a whole different so but when people say what are you? Both of my parents are from Puerto Rico, born and raised. I was born in Puerto Rico, but raised in New York, but I don't call myself a New Yorkian. If you want to classify me, you know, in Puerto Rico, in Puerto Rico they consider me New Yorkian because I speak really bad Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard you speak Spanish. Yeah, I, 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 I had to teach myself because I didn't speak it for social service reasons. How did you teach yourself? Practicing, no. Or just being just around. To, I listen to all my family members. One thing is to know it because you listen to it. Another thing is to speak it. That's right. You know, I'm trying to learn other languages now. Like what? German, because I'm going to be there too. And it's really easy. If you're bilingual, to pick up any other languages. So easy. So easy. I don't know. Um, languages don't match word for word. It's more like concept. You're surprised. Mm. You'd be surprised because I have a, a friend that's Georgian, 
and a lot of the words are very similar. Like Georgian. Yeah, it's like Russian and Spain. It's a little. Like, she's one of my best friends, and I didn't know. I thought she meant Georgia down south. I'm That's like, you don't look black. And she was like, girl, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> well, she had to teach me. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love it, and and when and I have a lot of Turkish friends, and oh my God, people don't understand that the culture and everything. It's so intertwined. Yeah, really. It's insane. Because I had given, uh, I went to a baby shower and we give Mano de Sabache mm -hmm. as a gift for the babies. Almost like an evil eye, but it's a black fist. It's to protect the baby. I, I, we do the African head. But, right. So mm -hmm. we do the fist mm -hmm. for the baby to mm -hmm. protect it. Right. Because all of our things are black. So. <laughs> so Turkish people do the same, which is insane. I didn't know. So, like, you know, if you start exploring, you'll see a lot of similarities mm -hmm. to the plot. So yeah, that's what I do. Food brings us together. Do you still, uh, uh, did uh, any of your family still down there, Puerto Rico? My uncle, he, he will never be in New York City. Mm -hmm. I just went to visit him and it I was, was just insane. Oh my God, because I haven't been there in forever, since I was like 16. I work so much, and I needed a break and kind of ground my feet and see relatives I haven't seen in so long. And he will not be in New York. He's gonna die here. That's you, 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 you brought that up and everything about New York and you know the opportunities. Yeah, that's not interesting. But yeah. he's up in the mountain and it's it was so beautiful, so peaceful. Mm -hmm. They have wild horses, and the horses actually greet you. It's insane <laughs> because I guess they see people come. So I didn't understand that he was greeting me. He was like, yo, say hello. I'm like, holy crap. Wow. But it was just so beautiful to just, you know, and I, and I wanted to have the authentic food and just. The, the what kind of food is that? I would like to have. Like yuca, you know, just codfish, you know, very Caribbean. Yeah. Uh, I've had codfish, but uh, anything that is your favorite? But I would say codfish, a wakafe. The bacalao, you talking about? The fried yeah. codfish fritters. Oh my God, yes. And 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 with with um avocado, cause they grow in like like we grow apples over here. And just slice it in. Oh my God, nothing <laughs> like it. Mm -hmm. Nothing like it. All right, that sounds good, man. Yeah. I mean, we want to get down there. Uh, but I think I got one more topic I was probably gonna bring up was um, cause you talked about mentoring. But from what you what you say, mentors come in disguise all through life. All well, through life, I will say that. Yeah. But then you have some that stick by you and really want to guide you and put you under the wing. You have brought up a mentor uh, in graffiti. Is that your graffiti mentor? Penis. Yeah. Absolutely. But what did what did you learn? Oh my God. Um. So when I had my solo show, Steam hit me up on DM, and he's like, you know. And I had met, met him on his solo show when he had one here, but I don't think he was talking about the, um, was that little spot in uh, yes. 12th Street, yep. 12th, 12th Avenue, 212 Gallery. Yeah, he had a, a solo yeah. show there. And then I think maybe two years later, I had my solo show, but he followed me on Instagram. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And then he hit me up and he was like, um, I really want to. Um, put you under my wing because me and him have similar styles. We have our name and then a character that represents us. That's true. That's us. Yeah. And he was like, I think you're phenomenal and I need to support women. You true, know, we yeah. never we never like, you know, take them under our wing like we should. And he's like, So I have a show, uh, show coming in Chicago, you wanna go? And I'm like, Are you serious? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah. Wasn't that that battle? Yeah, you? we had a battle at Logan's Wall. Yeah. That's a famous wall in Chicago. Jeff Skills and all of them out there. And um, he was like, he's like, let's exchange emails and numbers. And then he was like, well, I'm kind of putting you towards the end. So I'm only asking for 30 pieces. So I'm thinking, okay, 30 of the small ones. Again, I couldn't knock those out. But then he goes, sis, no, you got to go big. So when I say mentoring, he, I, and I'm a great listener. Mm -hmm. He said, I said, okay, teach me, you know, guide
guide me through this. He said, okay. He's like, put money aside, go get um the gallery canvases, the good ones, so it's a full. Those linen canvases, not those. Well, they're not linen, but the wood is a it's a it's a it's double bound with wood, more expensive. So I put a thousand dollars just for the canvases. I I go big. Wow. I take it serious. So I send them a photo. And I got forty eight thirty by thirty, like huge. I went huge. that's why I spent so much money. He said, That's what I'm talking about, sis. He said, Now I'm gonna give you the criteria. He said, now get one street sign and, and paint a street sign, but don't paint the whole thing. Use some of what on the sign right. as background. As a background. So my brother in law, he he's a construction worker in Pennsylvania. He got you some street He got me some <laughs> different street <laughs> oh. signs. So the one at night with the stars, that's why you see me it's a sweeper, but I made it into a a a, a roller. And I'm painting, and then I have my character, but she's at night because yeah. I used the stars. And so I would send him a pic. I said, this good, brother? He was like, that's what I'm talking about. He's like, now do paint on wood. I've never painted on wood. That's wow. new. That's yeah. not new, but it's the latest thing. So he said, paint on wood. Once again, don't paint the whole thing. Use the, the, the veins of the wood. Incorporate that. I just saw a documentary about... Um, uh, Geisha girl. So that's the geisha girl that you see. So I have my hair pulled back in the hoodie and the veins of the wood, I use it as the creases of my sweater. Mm. And then everything is brown. So I use, I made sure that, you know what, I'm also going to kick it up a notch. I'm going to use all brown. And then I use the geisha girl marker in the back of her neck. I showed it to him. He's like, oh my God, you're telling everything I'm telling you to do. That's what I'm talking about. He's like, okay, do something that is fluorescent, that glows in the dark, mm -hmm. so you can have a dark one. So that's the character. Everyone says there's um, Disney on speed, because that's the, the big 30 by 30, the blue face one, and the outside. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking The yellow. About. Yeah, was, right. Yeah. And then the lips are pink. Yeah. So that's the glow. So, so he's my mentor, and I adore him a thousand because. He made me elevate. Step, step your game up, yeah. And when we when we got the show, we were driving out to Chicago, the Geisha girl sold before we even opened. And he said, that's what I'm talking about. And now everyone in TNT crew, sit with Olga and, and, and guide her and teach her your secrets and, and, and skill set. So each brother sat with me. So you joined the family. Yeah. yeah. So we'll draw all night long. That's and what I'm every, talking about. Every brother sits with me. Yeah. And this is how I got started. This is what I do. That, so so mentoring is very important. Yeah. It's very important. And you have to be open for it. Yeah. Yeah. Every Each one teach one type of thing. So I have to thank you a thousand for that. Yeah. All right. I got one more question. Um. What do you what do you think when I say the Bronx? What do, what do you feel about the Bronx? What is the Bronx to you? Culture, culture, music, dance, graffiti, uh, fashion. We started it all. Everything. Stop playing. Everything. Everything. Food. Community. Everything. This is where it started. But it's it's a shame that every country is teaching that in their schools as part of the curriculum because they're so fascinated with us and we don't do that. It's home. Come on, I left Chelsea to come back home. That's home. It's comfort in all. We're in crazy times, but it's still. It's still. still. It's still. You, if, if I survived the burning bronze, well, you, can gonna, you think gentrification is <laughs> taking me out? You crazy. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. easy. As a matter of fact, I'm in their restaurant like this. I like this. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm putting money in your pocket, too. <laughs> nah, you're not taking me out of here. Yeah. All right, y'all. You ready to wrap it up? All right, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the last day of women's history, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Bush. I uh, finally got you. your story. And um, it's deep. You're busy. Thank what, you. What, you got anything? What's your next move? Where's your next show? Uh. Can they um, find you on Instagram? Like yeah, please follow me on Olga Correa underscore art 
Um, actually, I am going to um, be one of the judges because back to the status quo, um, Banji, if anybody knows the history of Banji, he was the one that um, was unifying all the gangs in the Bronx. But did something happen to him? They killed him. Yeah. He went to make a truce with somebody and something he did. happened. Yeah. Just like the Crips and the and the Bloods. Same mm -hmm. thing here. Mm -hmm. So um he's finally gonna get a street name after him. So uh my Aunt Lorraine was like, You gotta be part of this. So I'm gonna you know, it's a, if they're gonna close the street, it's for the kids. What street is it? Um it is uh as a flyer. I'll give it to you. Yeah. But it's right there on 153rd Street in the neighborhood. Yeah, but I know exactly what I said. So, I, yeah. I used to live on, on Longfellow, 153rd Street. Okay. A little bit around. Then. <laughs> so we're going to have a full activities. I'm going to be the judge because the kids are going to do art. And we're going to have a competition. And we're going to be judges. And, um, you know, it's going to be amazing. Wait, what's, the, what's the date? June 2nd. Is that Saturday? So if you follow me on Instagram, I always post the flyers just beforehand. Right. And please join or support, even if it's not, if I'm not in it, I post it to support because it's important. You got to keep it moving, keep it going. All right. Um, so I'll say, uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you to tag my book. Um, Let's go. That we can do it here. Um, I'll give you a page. And um, in closing, uh, the, the culmination of this project, we're going to have a big black party. I, have you seen the Bronx historical, that little house yes. across the street? It's that whole yard. They, they're going to um, do the, uh, you want to yeah. They're going to do the um, landscape. They're going to clean okay. out the yard. It's going to be DJs. going to be some art. Uh, okay. I think BG might be a part of it. Uh, they'll oh, cool. post that. I grew yeah. up with BG. I saw a picture of him. Going back, and I was like, "Wow, I think I now I think I know." Yeah, this we live adjoining the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we grew up together. Oh man, his work has improved one hundred thousand oh, percent. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm so proud of him. So proud of him. Yeah, me and his wife, we always talk. We, he's awesome too. But you know, it's, a, it's still a community for us. You know. Yeah, always, always. And then you got involved uh, going down Hunts Point, the, uh, the, uh, uh, what, uh, Boogie, the uh, Boogie Down Boogie Grind. Down Grind and what's the other, what's the terminal? It's, um, it's Bronx Landia. Are so, they opening that back up or? Yes, yeah, they're opening it up, but it's going to be more of a uh, community shops. place. Uh, it's huge. That's, not, not shops, just. Right, not shops. Okay. Um. It used to be a train station, so a lot of people don't know that that used to be the Metro North was stopped there. Right. And they're actually going to open it again, but yeah. further up. So Majora that actually owns... Go that black Bronx, lady. Yeah. I, I met she, her. She purchased that. Great move. So I'm actually doing the outside, and she wanted... Because I try to promote women. She was like, I want only women doing the outside. So what woman do you have? You, show, uh, me, green uh, cat? Uh, no. It's, uh, it's just me right now. Um, um, Kay Seaver just mm -hmm. did her flowers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get some Brooklyn girls to come through because it's hard. Like, there's, I don't, there's not a lot of women in the Bronx that, that I know of, like, that are kind of available. Um... I wish it, I could only keep it Bronx based, but sometimes it's, you know, scheduling doesn't yeah. allow it. So, and then the Boogie Down Grind, uh, because of COVID, they did an outside dining shape like a train. Yeah, I and know. And we mm -hmm. hit it. Right. And we do it best, as you know, because we've been there. Um, and we paint like we paint the train, and there's a whole community thing. It's yeah. cool, mm -hmm. music, you know, and we tag up, and it, it's fun. It brings everybody together. I seen one of the daycare people brought a group of kids in to yes, sit down. Yeah, they do. And, yeah, yeah. They do nice. workshop there yeah. as well, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And one more thing, what is that down the hill? Is that Lafayette? What is that? That little where they had the cords up there where they painted? It's at the yeah. bottom. What is that? Is that? Oh. Um, no, you were there though. I seen you there. Oh. Uh, 
at the bottom of Hunts Point, right? You got to cross the tracks to oh, get there. Oh, that's um, yeah, that's um, so that's a wonderful place too. So it's called Rocking the Boat. So they they get underprivileged children to go there, mm -hmm. and they learn how to do boats by hand. And they that was amazing when you go there. So. They can't just sit up in different places. Well, that's they do activities because it's a, it's a compound. So right. They do art shows and whatever. Right. But the main source is that building where underprivileged kids get a skill set on really how to build a boat. And then, you know, the river's right there. So by the end of the, the, the summer, they actually put, set the boat, put the boat and go upstream yeah. to the Hamptons and compete. Get out of here. So it's rocking the boat. Please support. The, they're amazing. The skill, and, and it brings confidence to these kids and, and a skill set that we don't know. I, I was just amazed. It's, 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 the Bronx has so much just the yeah. that people just don't know. And, 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 and it's still vibrant. It's still skill sets. It's still happening. And um, we need to put that out there because everyone is leaving thinking there's nothing here for that's us. Right, and it's not right. So much, you know. And it's funded. Come on, guys. Because if they, we don't use that funding, it goes away. So let's support these folks. Rocking the boat, please. Rocking Amazing. the boat. Yeah, so let's go. So I'm fast once again because uh, the fashion, you know, back back we couldn't afford models, so money is. So we used to have a model, and my professor would start us in 20 minutes, and we 10, 2. So that's why I have a photographic memory, because even if it was two seconds, I would look at you to make sure that when I finish, it's in my head. You can walk away if you want to. So that's that's why I'm also really quick. Because people say you can't quit. You done? Time is money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, so, thank you, Bush. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to have you. Uh, we could do it again. Uh, like I said, we got the uh, festival coming up. Yeah. Need to be there. You post it. You know, I'm yeah. to everything. Yeah. Especially, you know, if it's for a good cause. I will definitely make the time. You guys were just on uh, Mike's route. Uh, how, what was that about? Oh, my God, that was so cool. So, um... I, I it was a bunch of girls that yeah, showed up. So it, was, it, was, it was for a Women's Month and Up right. Magazine. Oh. Was doing uh, uh, kind of a tribute to Mike's rooftop and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I adore him. I adore him. They're good guys. They, yeah, they, they are. They are really good guys. And he, he thought that I painted there before. I'm like, no, this is my first time, so I was stoked. You bought your own paint? I bought it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I bought my own paint. You know, I'm prepared. Sometimes people supply, and he had, he had paint for us. But I leave it for those that don't have the paint. Right. Don't be, don't be greedy. I don't do that. You know, I always, and I always, you know, like even on the boogie down, I bring my own paint, and then I leave it for whoever. That's good. I have a, a nine to five. I'm blessed to have a right. good job. That's good. So you know, you have to do that sometimes because it's not easy. Ta -da! All right. So, oh, official. You go. Well, I think we do. We did we have your tag in the corner? No, sign your work. And this is this is a key thing that I also said. <clears throat> they asked me why do I tag vertically? Different. No, because I would get the smallest spot. <laughs> so, so what I do is when everyone gives me the smallest spot, I do my character standing ten foot tall and I wrap my name. So once again, advertisement. When you see all everyone along the wall, then you go, Holy shit, who's this? Right, right. I stand out. Right. Marketing strategy. Absolutely, <laughs> at his best. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.